Assalamu alaikum. Welcome again to another segment of Family and Community in Focus. I'm Dr. Rajabali and I'm your host. Uh, we, this, today I'm going to talk about how Ramadan is going and uh, it is amazing that we are digging into the third week of Ramadan. This is an amazing. I mean, uh, I think you all will agree with me. I don't know which part of the country you are in. We did have some tough days in terms of heat, in terms of temperature. Uh, here in this area, we even reached some three digits temperatures, 101 or two or three. Uh, but you will all agree with me that it went so quick. It is unbelievable. It is unbelievable I'm talking to you today and when you say there is only one more weekend left in Ramadan and then that's next weekend and then we are the next weekend we are in Eid. It is amazing how fast that has gone. And Alhamdulillah, Allah give us the tawfiq. We were able to fast and now we look towards completing it. And we ask Allah that Allah continue that tawfiq, continue that, that grace, that rahmah, that fadl, that bounty that we complete Ramadan. And that's what I'm going to talk about. What, what do we look forward? What do, you, what do we look uh, just to, to, to feel, to sense as we are gearing towards, as we are moving towards the end of Ramadan? Like any race, uh, you compare that like any race, any race you want, a, a marathon race, a, a bike race, a horse race, any race that you take, what is the most important part is the finish. <laughs> you got to finish, you got to be among the finishes, you got to cross the line. You know, that's why in the race we have two kinds of, of, of participants in the race. We have one what we call a, a sprinter and a stayer. You know, the sprinter will sprint. As soon as the, as soon as the, the go is given, that in sprinter will sprint and will take off quickly. That he may win, he may not win. Whereas the stayer doesn't necessarily take off the, 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 the race strongly but be in the pack and then finishes strongly. And that's who, the, the one who wins the race, the one who finishes strongly, whether that's a horse, whether that's a marathon uh, 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 a runner. Even in a political race, in a presidential race, the poll at the beginning may tell you something, this candidate is, is leading, but it's in the end of the race, the last TV, uh, a debate you will have, the last things you will do, what constituency you will do in that finish. And remember, you are tired. No matter what race it is, the finish is you are tired. You are tired, you are consumed by the race, but you have that energy to finish. That's what we are asking about. That's what we are talking about. Find that energy in yourself to finish, not only finish, but finish strongly. And Allah has made that easy for us. Allah is full of mercy. He did not leave us abandoned in any way or any form. So Allah has made that easy for us, how we finish it strongly, because he told us there is something in that end of Ramadan. And what is that something that is unique, that is amazing? It is one night. And one night, he called it the Laylatul Qadr, the night of power the night of power what is the night of power allah says laylatul qadri khayrum min al fish this night of power allah says it's better than a thousand months a thousand months and there are many explanation of that of this ayah uh, 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 the, the night of power is even better than a thousand months, and the scholars take many, many, many 
I'll give you one of the most common interpretation of this in the Tafsir. <coughs> what it means is, if you do whatever you do in this month, on this night, sorry, whatever you do on the night of power, whatever you do on the night of power, it will take a thousand month to match that outside Laylatul Qadr. Let me repeat that again. Whatever you do that night, okay, will need a thousand months of other nights other than Laylatul Qadr to do that. A thousand months. It's amazing. But let's say you do two nawafil, two nafil on Laylatul Qadr, night of the power. You will need a thousand months of two nafil to match that. So you can imagine what a bounty that is. You can imagine what a, what a reward for the people who find that night who say. That's why the Prophet wasallam have said, search, search that night in the last 10 nights. You know? Alhamdulillah, uh, some scholars say some people follow 27, but there are opinions that it could be 21, it could be 23, could be 25 and so on and so forth. Uh, so what the scholars say, it, you search it in the last 10 nights and among those 10 nights, you search it in the odd nights, that most likely it is an odd night, you know, and, and, and that's the whole idea. And it is a night where Allah's mercy break through the darkness of the soul. Allah's mercy breaks through the darkness of the human soul and <clears throat> it transforms conflict of wrongdoings into peace and harmony through the agency of angelic host representing the forces of mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is an amazing because Allah says by my command I send the angels down and Jibreel alayhi salam is one among them. They come down and they bring the command of Allah. They bring the, the, the order from Allah. If there is any night that your qadr can change, it is this night. If there is anything that they, this is why it is so, 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 so important. Okay? Uh, you can do anything in that night. You can recite Quran. You can do nawafil. You can do zikr. And most important is you can make a lot of dua and I will get into that a little bit later. I just want to go uh, and see some, uh, uh, see a hadith. We have a hadith that is in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim and come to us from Abu Huraira عن, when the Prophet وسلم, said whoever prays, whoever prays during the night of Qadr with faith and hoping for its reward with Allah will have all his previous sins forgiven. So here you go. If you really pray with your heart, with the belief, with the Iman, that you are seeking Allah's pleasure on any of those nights, and any of those nights turn out to be Laylatul Qadr, all your previous sins are forgiven. SubhanAllah. Uh, there are descriptions into how, what you feel on that, I'm not going to go into that, or how you look, that one of the descriptions is that the sun doesn't have rays in its early hours as it, as it breaks through, there is no rays, and there is a sense of peace. And that's very relative, that's very relative. You can't, what I'm saying, it's not a quantitative uh, thing that you can measure or you can that, but you feel a sense of peace, you feel a sense of serenity, you feel a, a, a sense of that the light has touched you. And it's amazing. And that's why it's not easy. You got to look for it. Hmm? You got to seek it. Would have been easy, the Prophet could have said, hey, this is that night or this is that night. Unfortunately, not. And there are recordings that say in the tradition that because two people were fighting, two Muslims were fighting, how bad it is for Muslims to fight. They were arguing, they were quarreling, they were fighting, and the Prophet ﷺ didn't say he, that knowledge that was taken from him and he could not. 
right? So he could not say it for sure. That's why he said it, it's one of the. So how do you do that? How do you how do you approach that? Uh, the only way is you do that, you achieve that. If you are, if you want to surely find Laylatul Qadr, then there is a way that guarantees you you will see Laylatul Qadr. All right. And the scholars have said, using another hadith, the scholars have said this hadith in the light of another hadith. The hadith that says, if you pray Fajr, if you pray Aisha, Jama'ah, in the masjid, you get half the night. And if you pray Fajr, uh, in, the, in the masjid, Jama'ah, you get the other half. So that means if you pray your Aisha and your Fajr in the masjid in Jama'ah, you will get the whole night. So the scholars say, hey, Try not to miss any of those two salat in the last ten, ten, 10 nights of Ramadan. I repeat myself, do not miss any of the uh, Asia and the Fajr. Jama'ah, I'm talking Jama'ah, you drive to the masjid, you drive to the nearest masjid, you pray with the Jama'ah, we pray with the, with, 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 with the masjid and you pray your Asia and you pray your Fajr. The next. Asia everybody is doing, I'll tell you what. Most people are doing the Aisha. It's the Fajr. <laughs> it's the Fajr. When you do Aisha, when you do Taravi, when you go home, maybe you sit down, you have a cup of tea. Some people are not even getting up for the Suhoor, which is a great Sunnah, but they are not getting. They just make the intention to fast and they sleep through it. And that's hard, it's to get to Fajr. It is very hard. And that's why people retire in the low ten days and they do, uh, they do the Itikaf in the Masjid. Okay, and that's something else you can think of. So, what can you do in this night, uh, in this last uh, 10 days, so that you have a strong finish in Ramadan, that you are among the winners of Ramadan, that you are among the seekers of Laylatul Qadr, and you are the finders of Laylatul Qadr, inshallah. So, like I said, number one is you do it a calf, if that is convenient for you, and that is itikaf, it means you will leave your home and you will sp spend the last 10 days in the masjid where you will have no communication. And I appeal to, to you who are doing itikaf. Itikaf is not a night out. Itikaf is not camping. It is so disheartening to see young people, what they have now in our generation, what we have made itikaf of. It's like a picnic, it's like a sleep out, a night out, everybody in their pajamas, texting, talking, talking, and I don't know, talking. No, itikaf is for you to be, it's an isolation, it's a removal from your thing, from your, from your uh, worldly life, where you go into the masjid in isolation, in seclusion. Traditionally, you will have a, a sheet around your they will make like a cubicle for you and they will, they will put a curtain around it and you are in that cubicle. And you spend your time making the zikr of Allah, reading Quran, I mean, uh, not talking uselessly, not te texting and checking on everything that is going on in the world. Then why did you come in the masjid for itikaf? If your little gadget is with you, you know what I'm saying? You are texting, you are watching internet, you, are, you get everything on your phone today. So if I were to do it a calf, first thing I would leave, my phone. <laughs> if I were to do a real good it a calf, the first thing I would leave, my phone. I'll leave my home. I'll leave my phone. If there is anything, my family can contact me, they know where I am. Usually the family will come and bring you your iftar usually or take your clothes or whatever. Because you are not supposed to leave. This is the real itikaf. You don't leave the musalla. Forget the masjid. Forget the masjid. We're not leaving the musalla where the musalla is. You don't leave the musalla. You stay within the musalla except when you have to relieve yourself, when you have to take shower. Or if there is nobody to bring you food, then you have to go and get your food. But these are the only reasons you have to really leave the musalla. Or if you are attending, you are, you, for example, you are a khatib, you are going to give a khutbah, but you say, I'm not going to do anything between leaving the masjid, do the khutbah, come back. You know? uh, we, which is not, uh, which is, uh, most people don't do, but these are the three things that, that, that you need to, 
to, to leave only if you have to use the restroom, you have to take a shower, that's, that's all the main reason. Otherwise, you stay in the masjid. So the first step is leave your phone behind so that you can concentrate and focus on your seclusion. That's the first thing. Second thing I said, everybody doing itikaf or not, everybody, young, old, male, female, please do go to the masjid of your choice and perform Isha Jama'ah and perform Fajr Jama'ah. Inshallah, you follow that, you will get the blessings of the 10 days. Inshallah, it is very, very important. Uh, uh, also, uh, what you can do is, is uh, 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 make dua, make zikr of Allah. It is a beautiful night. It is a night where the angels come and greet you and the angels are down, sent to earth, my friend. Do you know, can you put a value on that? SubhanAllah. So you need to make sure that you do that. Try to attend any masjid that you can. Special word of caution to those of us who finished the so-called khatm quran SubhanAllah. And I don't know why masjid do that. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm speaking frankly here. I hope nobody get offended. I don't know. I hope board of directors of masjid are listening to me. I don't know why we rush to finish Quran in 10 days, 15 days and then people just relax at home. So I'm talking especially to those of you, if your masjid finish the, 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 the khatm Quran, you need to find another masjid and you need to go. It is not time for tea and samosa and sit down and eat sweets at home and watch TV. I'm sorry, okay? Uh, you need to because that, nobody finishes Quran. We never finish Quran. We never finish Quran. Okay, so if your masjid has finished Quran for whatever reason, uh, it's not a good reason, you know, uh, you are encouraging your community not to stay strong in, in Ramadan. This is what it means. If you rush to finish your Quran and you make what we call the khatm Quran, then you are encouraging your, your community. You are encouraging your community not to finish strong in Ramadan. So please, if your masjid has done that, find another place find another masjid. There are so many masajids that will do that. They, some of them will finish 27, some of them will finish 29. You find a place where you go, where you, where you be part of that thing. Make, make a lot, read a lot of Quran, make dua. I want to spend some time about making dua. The Prophet Sallallahu this come from, uh, from, from Ahmad uh, ibn Majah and Tirmidhi, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi make a special dua. Allahumma innaka afoon kareemum tuhibbu al-afwa faafu anna. Allahumma innaka afoon kareemum tuhibbu al-afwa faafu anna. If you don't know that dua, please memorize it. If you don't know that dua, please, please learn it. You still have a few days to learn it before we hit the, the, the 20th night. Uh, you still have a few days left. You can learn that. Allahumma innaka afoon kareemum tuhibbul afwa faafu anna. Oh Allah, you are the one who loves to forgive. Remember, the, the, one of the strong sifat of Allah is that he loves to forgive. Right? So, oh Allah, you love to forgive, forgive me. You are the one who loves to forgive, forgive me. And that should be, and who doesn't need forgiveness? Hmm? We are sinful by our nature, we are sinful by our behavior, we are sinful by our action, we are sinful by our intention. We need to really, really sincerely ask Allah for, for forgiveness. Allahumma innaka afoon kareemum tuhibbu al-afwa fuhanna. Maybe Allah will accept our forgiveness on that night. As the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever look for it sincerely, Allah will forgive all the sins. And we need to be one of those. Make dua for yourself. Make dua for yourself, for your health. Even those of you who are in bad state, you should be making. Because some people say, for example, if I drink, I should not go. I'm drinking. No, you should go if you will drink. You should go. If you are a gambler, you should go in those nights and plead to Allah. Oh Allah, I have a weakness. 
I have a, a, an addiction problem, whether that is uh, drugs, whether that's alcohol, whether that's gambling, whether that is internet, whether that is bad movies, whatever your addiction is, don't feel guilty. Don't feel that you are inferior. No, 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 no. No, you are the one that needs to go more. You are the one that needs to seek those ten, last ten nights and plead to Allah. Oh Allah, I have a weakness. I hate it. I don't want to do it, but I am weak. Strengthen me. Strengthen me, O oh Allah. Rid me of my addiction. Rid me of my weaknesses. And you plead to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that on a, on a personal basis. And you ask Allah to, to keep your heart guided. Right? On a family basis, you make dua for your family. If you have children, you make dua for your children. We all should, who came to America as immigrants, and those of us who were in America and make the hijra from Christianity or whatever to Islam, we need to make that dua. Oh Allah, you guided our heart. Keep us on the guidance. Keep our children on the guidance. Keep our grandchildren, our progeny on the guidance. Ya muqallabil kuloob, thabbit kuloobana ala deenik. Rabbana la tuzi kuloobana. Ba'da idh hadaytana. Wa habal lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab. You say, oh Allah, oh you the flip of the heart. The one that flipped the heart. You guided my heart on the sirat al-mustaqeem. Keep my heart guided. Don't make my heart deviate after you guided it. You make the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. That, O oh Allah, make among my progeny. Those who will worship you alone will never associate anything with you. And will uphold and celebrate the authentic sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Because time is coming very difficult. And we are going to die. We don't know what our grandchildren will do. It's going to be a very difficult time for young future generations of Muslims to hold on to Islam, to try to hold on to Islam, to try to practice Islam in spite of the freedom that they have in this country. Okay, it's going to be very difficult. So you pray for your family, you pray for your uh, grandchildren, for your children, for your progeny, that they will be strong Muslim. You pray for the institutions, you pray for this country to have guidance, to keep our institutions, our masajids open. That they, con that they will uphold the constitution of this country and allow American Muslims to practice Islam freely. You pray for that because we live in this country. We have to pray for that. And finally for the ummah. You make dua for the ummah. The ummah needs your dua. Please make dua for the ummah. The Muslim ummah is topsy-turvy. The Muslim ummah is bleeding. So I beg you, my brothers and my sisters, in those ten nights, pray for this ummah. Pray that there is unity in the ummah. There is no unity in the ummah right now. We have no one voice. That's why we're being kicked. We're being spat on. We are being everything because we have no unity, we have no one leadership, we have no one voice. Pray that Allah rid this ummah of tyrants and hypocrites. Our leadership is infested with hypocrites and tyrants. And we pray, we pray to Allah because we are, we, we are, we are oppressed as an ummah. We ask Allah to accept the dua of the oppressed and rid this ummah of hypocrites and tyrants that is hurting the ummah that doesn't have any interest for the welfare of this ummah but are only enriching their pockets and only enriching their bank account in Switzerland. It is so sad. So you make that prayer. You make that prayer that Allah bring this ummah back to the Quran, back to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa you make the dua that this ummah change. We want change. That we pray for those who are struggling in the ummah to reform the ummah. We pray that Allah make their work easy 
And these are the serious, it is very serious. It may sound very political, but it is the state of the affairs of our Ummah. And this is the time we have, those last 10 nights of Ramadan, to be serious about it, to take it seriously. We pray for all those widows, all those orphans that have been made throughout the world, throughout the Muslim world. Huh? How many widows have been made? How many orphans have been made? What is the future of those orphans? Who are going to take care of them? You've seen, if you travel the Muslim world, you've seen them on the streets, on their own. All right? So we make dua. This is the kind of dua we have to make that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revive this ummah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive this ummah, forgive this ummah because we brought it upon ourselves. We brought it. The state of affair that we have, we brought it upon ourselves like the previous qawm did. We left the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why if you study the Quran, you see how much Allah talk about the past civilization. Why would he do that? To give you and me a degree in history? No, that's not why he did it. He did it, he told us what we don't know. We even tell the Prophet ﷺ, we are telling you that what you don't know about the stories and the histories of the past civilization. Because they abandon the teaching of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they take the teaching of Allah as a mockery and they did what pleased them and they refused and reject what did not please them and Allah punished them. So we brought those kind of things. Now we need to sincerely repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to sincerely ask Allah to forgive us. Lift up this ummah, bring this ummah in this ummah leadership, sincere leaders that would move this ummah upward and give us our izza in the world. When you look at it, so many Muslim countries, so many, so much amenities and, and richness in the Muslim world. But who respect us? None. None. Okay? And that's 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 a state of the Ummah. So inshallah I wish you the best of luck. I wish you that you will be among that, remember the marathon runner I told you. You are the marathon runner right now in Ramadan. That you will find the energy, you will toil hard, you will work hard and finish strong. And the only way you can win a race is you finish strong. So inshallah we all finish strong, inshallah we all finish with a good, good, good Ramadan and we benefit ourselves from it and inshallah we all will witness the glory, the spiritual abundance, the, the lightning, the flood of light that the lake Latul Qadr stand for. Ameen, inshallah, ameen. Jazakumullah khair wa assalamu alaikum.